coming up. You don't need to be a history expert to imagine the amount of bravery needed to be a fighter pilot in World War II. Axis and Ally alike had to face potential challenges from every direction with nerves of steel to ensure success for their missions. From fighting some of the strongest enemy fighter pilots to dealing with the limited technological resources available at the time. Freak accidents and miracles were common occurrence in this dangerous profession and led to many incredible stories throughout the conflict. Today, however, we will be discussing the accomplishments and stories of seven famous American aces that were killed in sudden tragic events. We'll be digging into their stories, how they became legends, and how they would meet their untimely ends. Welcome back to my series, Countdowns by TJ3 History. Hey guys, TJ here, and before I tell you about these famous American aces, I think we can all agree here at TJ3 History that we should definitely support our veterans. So with that being said, there is one veteran-owned company that I want to give a shout out to right now, Alpine Rings, the sponsor of this video. In case you don't know, Alpine Rings is a fantastic jeweler based in North Carolina that specializes in making the absolute best men's wedding bands using beautiful wood and the toughest materials around. Unlike most other jewelers, they craft rings that look just as rugged and as sleek as the men that wear them. And I can sincerely say that the guys at Alpine Rings went out of their way to take care of me. They sent me this beautiful band made from hammered tungsten and black apricot wood that got here the very next day. I absolutely love it and my wife loves it even more. So if you're about to tie the knot or are just looking for a new symbol of your marriage, don't go to a normal jeweler that doesn't even design most of its products for men. Instead, go to Alpine Jewelers and get a ring just as rugged as you are. Use the link in the description below to check out their awesome selection today, and thanks again to Alpine Rings for sponsoring this video. Enjoy. Topping out our list for today at number seven is none other than Captain Wallace Nathan Emmer a U.S. fighter pilot ace in the U.S. Army Air Force 354th Fighter Group. Immer is best known for being one of the first pilots to fly a combat mission in the P-51 Mustang. He received multiple awards in his career for his actions and bravery in combat, including the prestigious Distinguished Service Cross and several Distinguished Flying Crosses. Between February 20th and August 7th of 1944, Immer experienced multiple aerial victories that amounted to the destruction of 14 enemy aircraft, not including assists. On August 9th, the 353rd Fighter Squadron's commander was killed in combat, so Immer was effectively appointed to be the acting commander of the group. Later that same day, Immer's own P-51, however, was shot down by German anti-aircraft. He managed to bail out of the plane, but his body suffered severe burns. He landed near the Seine River in northern France, where he was captured as a prisoner by German soldiers. They then brought him to have his wounds treated at a hospital, but his condition remained critical. After being transferred to multiple POW camps over several months, he was marked to be released by the Red Cross on February 18th of 1945 due to the severity of his injuries. While waiting to be transferred, however, Emmer was standing right next to an air raid siren, one that happened to go off as he was right beside it. This abrupt deafening noise shocked Emmer so much that it actually caused his heart to fail on the spot. The 27-year-old pilot died in the arms of fellow Allied pilot Officer Leonard A. Walker, a fellow POW. In number six, we have William Perry Brown Jr a highly decorated aviator and flying ace that served in both World War II and the Korean War. Throughout his career, Brown served in the United States Navy and Marine Corps and earned his title as a flying ace after several combat victories between April and May of 1945 during the Battle of Okinawa. By the end of the battle, he totaled seven total victories while flying in the Corsair, four of which occurred within four minutes of each other on May 4th. When World War II ended, Brown was awarded two Distinguished Flying Crosses for his valiant actions at the front. 
Brown was later stationed as a flight instructor in Florida before his deployment to Korea in 1952, where he was assigned to the 1st Marine Aircraft Wing and later to the Marine Fighting Squadron 323. On February 24th, however, he acted in an eight-plane strike with the intent to destroy crucial bridges and railroads for enemy forces in North Korea. Brown made his first enemy contact of the day by dropping bombs on a North Korean transport. He saw a convoy shortly after heading towards a supply facility that was armed to the teeth. Without a moment of hesitation, Brown threw his plane forward into a strafing assault, unleashing his weapons on the enemy target at full force. His plane was hit, however, and burst into flames as he pushed the attack onward. He remained in his dive at a sharp angle, and fellow wingmen who witnessed the incident say that his gunfire hammered away at the convoy until the last moment, when his plane plunged itself into the center of the convoy, exploding on impact. Although his body was never recovered, after his death, Brown was awarded a second Navy Cross for what he accomplished in this final mission. Moving along to number five, we have Don Buzz Bierbauer, an ace in the U.S. Army Air Force from Davidson, Canada. He was sent to the 354th Fighter Group in 1943. Here, Bierbauer worked his way through the ranks of his fighter squadron and was promoted to captain just a year later in January of 1944. The 22-year-old served in a variety of combat missions, flying the North American P-51B Mustang and earning the title of Flying Ace after he shot down a BF-109 on February 20th of 1944 for his fifth victory. By July 7th of 1944, his total victory count would sit at 15 enemy planes destroyed in the air and two more on the ground. On August 9th, Bierbauer was on a mission in France and had destroyed an enemy plane and gun emplacement already. As he readied himself for a second volley on a ground target, his plane was pummeled with hits from anti-aircraft, striking both the wing and fuselage. The aircraft was immediately thrown into a vertical climb before stalling and diving towards the ground. Somehow, Bierbauer managed to release his canopy in the midst of the chaos and crawl his way out of the aircraft, only to be blown back, never even getting the chance to open his chute because of the low level of altitude. The plane subsequently crashed and killed the pilot instantly. After his death, Bierbauer was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for this final mission. For number four, we have Donald Aldrich, a U.S. Marine Corps Reserve Captain. Aldrich became the fifth highest scoring Marine Corps ace of the war and amassed 20 total combat victories in his three combat tours. His career had an unusual start after the U.S. Army Air Force refused to admit him because he was married. So in 1941, Aldrich joined the Royal Canadian Air Force instead. He later became an instructor pilot and transferred to the U.S. Marine Corps in late 1942, where he went on to join the VMF-215 and fly in the Solomon Islands campaign with the F-4U Corsair fighter. After World War II ended, Aldrich continued to serve in the Marine Corps while stationed in North Carolina. On May 3rd of 1947, he was given permission to visit his family in Chicago. As he was traveling to this naval air station in Glenview, his plane began showing signs of engine trouble. Aldrich decided to land his plane at Ashburn Airport to be safe, but he didn't realize that the runway had been closed due to safety concerns over the thick mud covering the airfield. The moment his wheels touched the ground, the aircraft flipped over and killed Aldrich in the process. Over the course of his career, he had been awarded the Navy Cross, Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal, and Purple Heart. At number three, we have Robert Coffey, a coal miner turned U.S. Army Air Force pilot in World War II. Coffey was assigned to the 365th Fighter Group, nicknamed the Hellhawks, and piloted the P-47 Thunderbolt here. He initially commanded the 388th Fighter Squadron before being promoted to Deputy Commander. Over the course of his group's 97 missions, Coffey was their top aerial ace with six victories of his own. He would survive the war and would go on to serve in the U.S. Embassy in Santiago, Chile from 1945 to 1948. 
Here, Coffey decided to resign from this post as a lieutenant colonel to pursue a career in politics. However, he was still commissioned as a colonel for the U.S. Air Force Reserve. In January of 1949, at the age of 30 and after winning his election, Coffey was sworn in to the House of Representatives. In April, he was scheduled to take part in a routine cross-country test flight for the Lockheed F-80 Shooting Star. Coffey and his co-pilot, an old friend from the Hellhawks, were scheduled to stop and refuel in Kirtland, New Mexico, while on their way to an Air Force base in California. Unfortunately, the F-80 would never make it above 25 feet as something went wrong on takeoff. Instead, the shooting star fell back to the earth, colliding with the terrain. The plane tumbled over itself, breaking apart into pieces and killing Coffey instantly. Because of this, the House of Representatives had a recess for one day to commemorate Coffey's tragic death. Over the course of his military career, he was presented with many prestigious awards, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, Air Medal, and many others. Up next, we'll discuss Fletcher Eugene Adams, an ace from the 362nd Fighter Squadron that flew a P-51B named Southern Bell. He's primarily known for his combat feats in the European theater, where he successfully shot down nine enemy aircraft. On May 30th of 1944, Adams was running a mission near an airbase in Germany. In a blur of bullets and confusion, four BF-109 enemy fighters overran Adams and shot down his P-51. While he did manage to bail out of the aircraft without sustaining much injury, he was by no means safe. Upon landing after parachuting from his aircraft, Adams was captured by three German soldiers and placed him under custody. Shortly after this, two local citizens who happened to be German nationalists approached the German soldiers who had just taken Adams prisoner and asked to hand him over. For some reason, the German soldiers complied and handed the downed American pilot over to the civilians. The German nationalists promptly took Adams into some nearby woods and shot the young pilot multiple times, sending gunfire echoing through the trees. Other civilians turned to the sound to see the group of men looming over Adams' now dead body. However, this was not made known until the end of the war, when the civilians were brought to court and deemed guilty for killing a POW. The two men were sentenced to serve time in prison, one for nine years and the other for five. Adam's service was honored after his death with a Congressional Gold Medal and a Purple Heart. The final pilot on our list is Major Richard Dick Bong of the 49th Fighter Group, a man claiming the title of the top U.S. fighter ace in World War II. Credited with shooting down 40 Japanese aircraft in his Lockheed P-38 Lightning fighter, Bong was one of the most highly decorated pilots of his time. In his famous P-38, nicknamed Marge, Bong took down Japanese aircraft wherever he saw action. He quickly learned how to fly the faster twin-engine American aircraft in ways that allowed him to maintain a constant advantage over the nimble and more maneuverable Japanese Zeke fighters. Because of this, by the time 1945 had come around, Bong was the ace of aces for the United States. And like many of the other top American aces, he was taken off of the front lines and sent back to the States to avoid the loss of their top pilots. Unfortunately, in an ironic twist of fate, this would be the very decision that would seal the fate of Richard Bong. Bong was stationed in North Hollywood, California as a test pilot. On August 6th of 1945, he was scheduled to perform a test flight of a Lockheed P-80 jet fighter. Shortly before his flight, Bong had spoke to a fellow test pilot, Captain Ray Crawford, and told him that he'd previously forgotten to turn on the I-16 pump in an earlier flight in the day, a slip that could easily doom a P-80's flight. Later, when Bong launched into the air on another test flight, something fatal occurred. The plane's primary fuel pump malfunctioned or was never turned on. Bong may have forgotten to switch on the auxiliary fuel pump or he may have been prevented from doing so. As Bong's plane began to go down, he attempted to bail out, but the low altitude prevented his chute from launching. The jet slammed into a tiny field nearby, killing Bong, the highest scoring American ace in history at the age of 24. 
Bong's tragic death was announced on the front page of newspapers across the country, right beside the first reports of the Hiroshima bombing. His accomplishments were commemorated in 1986 when he was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame. All sorts of landmarks have been named in his honor, including the street that leads to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. If you enjoyed this historic recreation, please consider supporting me on Patreon, or grab something from my fan store here. Make sure to hit subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.